Hello Traders, Gary Wagner here. Just after 11 o'clock in Honolulu, 4 o'clock in New York. It is Friday. Happy Aloha Friday as we say on the islands. It is December 30th, 2016 and this is the Daily Report for Gold and Silver, our weekend review. I do want to talk about our gold forecast for 2017. We have had a most interesting year with a lot of turns and twists, unexpected results, and unexpected reactions to those results. With that in mind, let's look at settlement price for gold for the calendar year 2016. Gold is trading lower on the day, off about $7 at 1151.10. It has traded to a low of 1150 and a high of 1164. Most importantly, we will finish out the year with a net gain of about 9% in gold. And that, considering recent activity and recent events, I think is an admirable uh, result in terms of where we saw gold settle. Silver also trading under pressure today, off about a percent and a half and well below $16, closing at $15.98. The dollar index, which is something that we have been watching closely, is continuing to drop this for the second day in a row, although yesterday's action was really supportive of uh, precious metals pricing. So we had a mix of a weak dollar and strong gold propelling it up about $15. Today, even with this four tenths of a percent decline in dollar value, gold still uh, sold off trading to lower pricing. With that, I invite you to view this year's forecast for gold 2017. So traders, it is hard to believe that uh, 2016 is quickly coming to a conclusion and we are just on the doorsteps of a new calendar year with 2017 and 2017 trading uh, set to begin in just a few days. With that in mind, I do want to take a look at our current forecast for gold, but we have to take our forecast and look at it in relationship to what has just occurred. I've put up a weekly chart in gold, which we're looking at really a very, very big picture, beginning with the rally that began in about 2008 and culminated with the current record high in gold just above 1900. Now, from that point, we went into a multi-year extended correction, taking prices really from about 1900 uh, down to their conclusion, which occurred at the end of last year, beginning of this year at about 1050, a tremendous decline. Now, it's quite obvious that fundamentals rule the market. In other words, market prices change because of market sentiment, which is based upon the belief of what will occur in the future on a fundamental basis. But we can also say that this year, fundamental analysis was turned on its head and predicted and anticipated results in many cases turned out to be the polar opposite of what was expected. For instance, the Brexit vote, as well as the most recent presidential election. We had really strange reactions to the market. The initial knee-jerk reaction in both cases was what was ex expected. However, what was not expected was for those trends to completely reverse in an extremely short period of time, three days for the Brexit vote until equities began to move higher, and hours for the presidential election in which we saw the market initially drop, Dow futures down about 800 points immediately following the election results. But by the morning, we began a rally that was one of the most dynamic rallies in U.S. equities, taking the Dow within mere points of that milestone at 20,000. Now, that being said, fundamentals have not been sharply concise in terms of eloquently predicting future events. So based on that, I'm going to move to a simply technical analysis of the market and our forecast will be based on Fibonacci retracement as well as Elliott wave analysis and some standard Western technical indicators. Our current model is under the assumption that the multi-year correction 
really concluded at the end of last year, beginning of this, when gold prices dropped to 1050 per ounce. And our count looks something like this, a wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four, and then a concluding fifth wave. Most importantly, the overall characteristics of this multi-year sell-off was that year in and year out, the high of that year's month would be higher than the next year. So when we look at what happened in terms of the record high, and this occurred in 2011, then we look at the high that was achieved in 2012, the high that was achieved in 2013, in 2014, and in 2015, the one thing that we can see is they consistently moved to lower footing. That changed this year because once we hit this low at 1050, the subsequent rally that followed it took gold prices to a high, a two year high, which was well above the high of 2015 and really went and matched the high of 2014. That was the technical evidence that was required for us to be able to state that the multi year correction had ended. With that in mind, I do believe we concluded our fifth wave, minor fifth wave intermediate, and we completed a major A, which puts us to our current environment and this year's activity in which I believe we are in a ABC correction in a bear count. Now of this ABC count, I believe that from the beginning of calendar year 2016, up until it hit the record high this year at 1380 roughly, that completed in intermediate A. I believe that subsequent action and the correction that had been existing from about June of this year down until uh, roughly December the 15th, because that was the day that we hit this intra day or intraweek low at about 1123 was our intermediate B wave. I also believe that there is a high probability that that B wave has concluded in terms of a straight model. We typically look for a B wave to move anywhere between 50 and 75% of the overall A waves upside move, which means that we could have very well seen our conclusion uh, for this corrective wave, which would mean that we have probably, or even possibly, I should say, have entered a final C wave for this correction. Now, one of the things that is interesting is that typically, in terms of Elliott wave modeling, the A and C waves are about equal in terms of the moves that they make. And so, under the assumption that our C wave is equal to that of the most recent A wave, we could see over this next calendar year, not only a rally begin, but a rally that would culminate with a high above this year's high, possibly as high as about 1450, anywhere between 1437 and 1450 over calendar year 2017. I believe that in terms of modeling, this could be what we see unfold next year. Of course, it's going to be fundamentally driven. And this type of action would be the outcome, of course, if President-elect Trump is unable to deliver on his campaign promises and policies, or if there is uh, any kind of geopolitical turmoil based upon his leadership style. However, there is a major caveat to this model, and that caveat is, should gold prices break below this level at 1123, and specifically below about 1110, which is a 78% retracement, then we have a failure in terms of this ABC, and we would see prices drift lower. I would imagine that they could go as low as about the recent lows that were achieved last year, beginning of this year at about 1050. However, all things being equal and our current count does indicate that we could see the market rally and rally in a manner that we haven't seen since 2008. There is absolutely no doubt that in the case of 2016, truth has become much stranger than fiction. 
And so the fact that we believe that we could in fact see gold prices spike and spike dramatically next year is not out of the realm of possibilities. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading. We had an excellent year in terms of our performance and my wish is that you have happiness, health, prosperity, and good trading most of all next year. Bye-bye.